welcome back to my channel. This is Enjoy the Bounty of Planning with Tonisha Taylor. I am so excited. I have the February cloth and paper box for y'all. Now, listen, I did an unboxing of the January box. I honestly cannot remember if I posted it or not. If I didn't, because that actually just hit me. I cannot remember if I did that. If I didn't, then y'all going to get the January posting and probably the February posting at the same time. Just, hey man, listen, January is my birthday month and I, I lose all focus, quite frankly. <laughs> I just start doing birthday things. So, anywho, here we are in February. Uh, I'm so excited about this box. The happy hour conversations around this box, the sneak peek um things around this box are so exciting that I cannot wait to open it. So let's take a look at what we have. Ooh, she's so pretty. So as always, we have our cards up front. So we have our journaling cards, our what's in our box card, and this lovely tent card for April. Uh, that is our calendar card. I love that they are changing it up where the color is going to be slightly different for each um like it looks like it's going to be each quarter perhaps because i have right next to me the january one and you can see the january one was definitely white i believe the february and march ones were also and this one for april is a really gorgeous gray color oh new Ooh. okay so this definitely is like more of instead of being a paper a tissue paper rather it feels more like a kind of a butcher paper kind of which is really nice so let's pull out all the things oh my god let's leave that bubble wrap behind i'm gonna put that on the floor so that we can put all the garbage in that box later so Eey, look at you guys okay we're gonna start here this is so exciting okay so we have here uh this says priorities and then it says high and low it looks like this is some kind of a notepad let's see it is it's a notepad oh my gosh Look at that. Okay. So it looks like there's a place to put the date and then a place to write in the, maybe this is something you could use to figure out what the priorities are for the day or the week. Um, and it's something that you could either leave on your desk or put in your planner uh, to be able to do that. That is so cute. This paper is a little bit then it does seem to be kind of white, but it kind of seems like it has sort of a, yeah, it's not white, white. So it's kind of like a blue, kind of has like a blue cast to it maybe, uh, but it looks really pretty. It kind of, if you got the reading notepad in the bibliophile box, then this paper feels similar to that paper. And then it does say cloth and paper at the bottom and a place to write the date at the top. So that's really cool. Okay, let's open up. We have the time block stickers. So the January and February box are all about um, prioritizing time management, project management, that kind of thing. Uh, so this is so cool. I love this. So they're calling this Lagoon. So in the sneaks, this kind of had like a black look. It still has kind of like a black, but if you're looking at it like more with uh, like, it kind of has like a dark blue kind of black look. So pretty. So these are transparent time block stickers and you have them in Lagoon. You have them in ash, which is kind of a gray color, and then in fawn, which in their other transparent products, and this one too, has a little bit more of a green cast, and this has more of like a, a little bit more of like a beige kind of cast. 
And then you have Mykonos, which has a sort of a gray green kind of cast. I love that on here, you're seeing it kind of almost printed over at the hour block. So you can kind of get an idea of the, of the fact that these smaller ones are like an hour. This is like two hours. Um, yeah, two hours. This is maybe more like three hours. And then this is more like four hours. So you really get that nice idea. So each one has 16 stickers on it, which is really cool. And then you get four colors. So that's awesome. And then we have our uh, dashboard, which as a reminder, I get everything for my, from, for my sub box, everything in the half letter. So, ooh, that is so pretty. So this dashboard looks like we basically got two. So they're paired for layering. So this one is vellum. It's a thin kind of vellum. It says, when your vision is clear, strategy is easy. And they just have cloth and paper here and number two up here for February. And then you have this mark. So it's a vellum with black printing. And then you have this cardstock, this sort of architectural, the way that this is shot in black and white kind of reminds, might remind you of stairs or it actually kind of reminds me of the corner of an iPhone. <laughs> So it's going to be the same on the front and the back. So that's really cool. And then we have this mind mapping, which is always useful. So this insert is, ooh, you guys. Okay, that was a lot. <laughs> Okay, so remember last year, I think, we got a mind mapping notepad. There's a desk notepad. I have mine on my desk. So I'm just gonna walk over here and grab it. And I use it, not like every day at all, but I use it often enough. So this is what it looked like as a desk size notepad. It was blank on the back dot grid in the middle with a circle in the middle for you to write your big idea and then map around that idea and then on this side you just had like the circles that you could use to do like tasks or something and then some line note space and then some reflection space right here so one of the reasons why i think i didn't use this very often or i don't use this very often is because it is a desk notepad so i use it when i'm at my desk to like write down things when i need to kind of sketch out kind of a plan especially as a researcher I I do use this to really kind of brainstorm ideas and kind of like data dump things out of my head sometimes around a project and so I do find them useful so it looks like we're getting something similar but as an insert that you can keep in your planner so you still have the circle in the middle where you can write down the main idea and then write down all the ideas around that idea or things that maybe make it come true or, or however, right? And then on the back, what I love is you have at the top, you have a summary section with two columns. Um, really, it's actually four columns across, but you have a short column and then a long column, a short column and then a long column. So you can basically use this like a checklist, like a bullet journal kind of style checklist to check off all of the things that need to be done. And then right here, you have this research section, which is just a whole section of notes. So as a researcher, if you're developing a research paper, Oh my gosh, this is amazing because, especially if you're developing a research paper and you're in class, or you follow, you follow the research pipeline that I use, you can use this part up top to write out the pipeline things so that you can check them off along the pipeline. This down here to list research references, data references, um, 
particular references that you want to include as you're brainstorming, or maybe even one of the things I always tell my students and mentees to do is to make sure that when you're researching in your research notes, you should always, 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 always write down your search terms, the date you search for those terms, and the database you search for those terms in, because nobody wants to spend time searching for the exact same search terms that you searched in a database and already found nothing before. So if you found zero things last week, research doesn't come out that fast. So it's not like as if, if, if it gave you zero things, you know, a week ago that you're going to come back, do that exact same search with those exact same search terms in that exact same order and go from zero to a hundred. Like that's not that is not what's going to happen. Um, and so at all by any stretch of the imagination. So you should always write that down. So something like this, what a great insert for something like that. I love this. So it looks like they are all going to be the same. Yeah, they're all going to be the same. I love that. Okay, it looks like this last page, they gave an example of how to use it. So you have your date at the top. And then they just use like a 2023 planner setup, for example. And then they said, okay, finance section, stocks, notes, schedule, and gave like some little notes around how you could possibly do that. Right, so if you've never done ma mind mapping before, this is kind of what it looks like. If you are a Generation Xer, <laughs> this probably looks real familiar because it was called Mind Cloud, I think, when we were little kids, uh, learning to do this in school. I, I can honestly tell you, I actually hated this way of writing an essay, hated it. <laughs> weird that I, like bothered me to my core but it's something that makes sense to me now um and I think it's because we were discouraged from like making any kind of structure around it uh when I was young and then it was like okay but no like most people that's not you write, even if you write it all down, you want to like make lines or boxes or something to like show that this is supposed to go a certain direction. And so um, later on, I was like, okay, I actually, it's funny. I, I like it now because now I know that, no, you should actually be putting arrows. You should be putting lines. You should be putting boxes all of that to give it a little bit of direction, right? So that you know kind of the big topics from the supporting topics. So I really think this is cute. And then they did give you on the back just a key, right? So here they said key. So the idea here would be like, if you were gonna do this for something like this, you might have like different colors or different kind of things that you're doing to set this up. Like I said, I love the idea of using it for writing notes for a paper or research project or something like that. And using this to, to put your publication steps. Or if you're turning in a paper to a professor and your professor breaks down the steps of writing the paper, this would be perfect to put down, you know, put use it like bullet journal style to put down here, a place where you could check off the steps, you write the steps next to the step, you could write like a date of when it's due. Okay. And then again, your research information here. So I am, I am actually oddly excited about that. <laughs> I just love things that like help me that can go in my research journal that can help me with doing researching but also because of the things we got from last month for the project planning, this is also something I could see being really, really useful if you're doing like long range project planning, this could be really useful. So my next two things that I'm actually also very excited about. So one are these little pocket folders. Y'all, 
I think Ashley said on a happy hour, but and to mind that cloth and paper has never done anything like this. I'm so excited about this. <laughs> so these are pockets. Look at that, that you can stick in your planner to be able to hold some of whatever, whatever you want to hold in here. Here we go, y'all. And it looks like we got, oh my gosh, you guys, we got six, everyone. Look at that. So we got six pockets. I could see using these for dividers as well instead of having dividers using these um i could see using these whether you're you're keeping a budget journal or a budget planner your everyday carry you know whatever even i i definitely am going to be putting one of these in my research and reading journal or notebook uh putting these probably putting one of these because for my daily planner, my, my weekly personal planner, I am always, always, always putting things in the planner like ticket stubs, programs from events, pictures, stuff like that. Usually that kind of stuff, business cards even, I take to the page of the week where they happened, but not always. And so I could see putting something like this in my planner to stick those little things in that I would actually stick in my um my year planner so that they don't get they don't get away from that year if that makes sense so this is so exciting yay all right let's put this to the side because actually one of the things if you're new here or if you've been here for a while you know we always do a little setup so we're gonna move things to the side open our last thing and then we are going to do a little setup so last thing i am so excited <laughs> so many people are so this is a weekly oh my god that feels like butter oh my goodness that is so soft feeling you just kind of want to rub it <laughs> so oh that's so pretty so this is a weekly time block notebook it is a 9.25 by 10.5 inches. So, so it says here. <laughs> um, it is absolutely beautiful. So y'all know I usually keep the back page that tells me what a thing is so I can reorder it later. This one I would actually probably not keep because it says what it is in gold across the top. So this is from Cloth and Paper, their headquarters in Richmond, Virginia, and it says uh, weekly time block and notebook. Uh, the only thing it doesn't tell me is the color, which I, I don't know, I might actually just cut this and tape it in the back. But you guys, look at that. Oh my gosh okay so this is a little this is a little tricky because you would kind of think since this is written here that when you open it the time blocking is going to go this way it actually doesn't it goes this way but look at that beautiful gorgeous creamy yellow colored paper this is so nice this paper is so soft it does have a nice thickness to it it is perforated so that you could if you wanted to pull this out if you wanted to um, pull this out and keep it in your planner or pull it out and put it on a whiteboard or a cork board or whatever above your computer or in your office and have like a schedule that you had in your office on campus that you could just kind of quick reference. I could see this being so great for my faculty out there who want to be able to show office hours, right? For my faculty out there who, if you have an undergraduate research assistant or a graduate research assistant, filling this out and being able to have this taped up on a wall or 
you know, on a board or something in your office so that you can keep track of which research assistants are coming in at which times, right? Or if you didn't necessarily want to have it up where people could see it like that, you could have something like this just on your desk so that you can have um, who is coming in when using especially these color block stickers to be able to assign a different color to each one of your research assistants, your undergraduate or graduate research assistants, and then be able to put in who's coming in at what time. Like that, that, mwah, chef's kiss. <laughs> that, what a great idea, right? Now, if you are the graduate student, right, and you need to manage your time, you've got graduate teaching, you've got maybe you're a graduate student who's taking classes, but you're also teaching classes, but you're also somebody's research assistant, and heaven forbid you need to finish your own dissertation, right? I could see using something like this to block that, right? Use these time stickers. One is for the classes you're taking. One is for the classes you're teaching. One is for your personal research, that dissertation you've been trying to write, and one is for the research that you're doing for someone else if you're a research assistant, right? So you're using each one of these to be able to block time for that. And so like the one for the classes that you're teaching, for example, you might use this one for if you're teaching Monday, Wednesday, Friday, for example, to block off your Monday, Wednesday, Friday classes because those are only an hour, but you have to grade and prep for those classes. And maybe you take about two hours to four hours a week to do that. You could use these two hour block stickers to block off that teaching time. That's your prep time, right? And then for your classes that you're taking, if the classes that you're taking are three hour classes, if they meet once a week, they're usually three hour classes, you would use these bigger ones that are gonna cover a three hour block to mark off the, three, the class that you're taking. But you might use these shorter ones that are obviously, these look like they are, yeah, they're gonna fit, these middle ones are gonna fit about two hours. Uh, you want to use you maybe you want to use these for your reading and study time to be able to show when you're prepping for that class right so that's that's for my students right now for my I said for my faculty with research assistants but what about my faculty who don't have research assistants you don't have somebody else's time you're trying to manage you're trying to manage your own same principle one color for the class that you're teaching one color for your committee work, especially if you are a lecturer or pre-tenure or tenure track faculty member, you probably have a committee responsibility for your department, the college, or the university. So you might use one color for those committee assignments. Uh, and then maybe you do, if you're like me, I had university commitments, department committee, Commence, uh, commitments, university committees, but I also sit on national organizations and I sit on those committees and some of those things, I'm in a leadership position in those things. So like I was the chair for CID at Western States. I was one of the interest groups there. And so maybe you have one color for that sort of national or international organizational service, right? So one class for one color for the classes you're teaching, local service on campus, community or national service, and then a color for your research because it's really, really important that you have your research listed out, right? So notice that we have teaching, research, service, right? The three things that we need to be thinking about making sure that we're spending time on in order for us to earn tenure or continue to have those good reviews for our uh, faculty reviews or what have you, right? And I don't care where you are, I don't care if you're at a research one or a community college, faculty across the board, especially if you're tenure track, you have 
commitments that are teaching commitments, research commitments, and service commitments. The percentage of time you need to spend on those things every day or every week or every month is 100% dictated by how much those things are weighed in your tenure packet. So, uh, and that is going to shift a lot depending on what type of university you're at or what, what your position is at your university, right? So for example, I'm a department chair, I am a full professor. So I have to think about post tenure review uh, and my post tenure review percentages are different because I'm an administration, but just because they're post tenure review, right? My, my percentages are different now than they were when I was pre-tenure or even when I was tenure before I became full professor. So, and now that I say that, I need to look those up because <laughs> I know they're different, but I can't tell you what the percentages actually are because I need to double check. <laughs> but I would use something like this to create an ideal schedule for myself so that I can have uh, something that, like I said, is that ideal schedule of what I would want my ideal week to look like right? Um, so that I would have something for, and I would probably, because I like this, but it's so dark, I would probably use these three lighter colors. So one for teaching, one for research, one for service. Um, and because I actually do respond to color, and on my electronic calendar, my iCloud service is kind of this pink color, um, it's closer to this. This ash color is kind of a pinky gray is the way that this is reading both on camera and in real life on paper. And then you have this sort of green color, uh, which my research is always a, actually blue, which actually does kind of make me want to use that. But I can't, I'd have to use a white um a white pen for that and I have one I think but I'm not 100% sure um, so I'm gonna go with this one because I would definitely be able to use a black sharpie on that and then this lighter color for class so since we always do a little bit of a setup around here let's go ahead and do one using this creating our ideal schedule so we have a sharpie we're gonna come over here and grab our planner. I still love her so much. Right now, I am using uh, the Pilot Friction uh, highlighters. These are erasable highlighters. So I'm using this erasable highlighter and this is this really pretty pink color. And recently I moved over to using the Waterman's uh, fountain pen. I am using a um, fine nib and I will link it um, down below. Is it going to focus? Come on. Not really. There we go. All right. So the fine nib Waterman's um, I am loving how saturated this black ink is. Um, it brings me so much joy. So in my planner, I have an ideal day here. I'm gonna use this as my guideline for setting up how I'm gonna do this, okay? So let's go ahead and also out of here, let's grab I keep my um, cloth and paper tweezers right here because this magnetic clip also from cloth and paper keeps those tweezers just sticking right in there. So convenient. All right, let's go back to that ideal page. And let's use these stickers. I'm so excited about this. <laughs> All right, so let's see. We said teaching, research, service. So let's put down this teaching one first. 
So I only teach one class this semester because I'm a department chair. I only have to teach one class. So it looks like this bigger box, once I laid it down, really is covering two full hours. So my classes actually go from six to nine. So I am going to go ahead and, since this is transparent, let's see, do I wanna just grab? Yeah, we're just gonna grab this one. Or do I wanna grab just this one hour one? Ooh, that might be more like a half an hour, you guys. Let's just go with this one. Let's see what we got here. I'm just gonna butt that right up against that. There we go. So that is our class block. Then we have on Fridays are my research days. So I am gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use this one to block out some research time. And I actually do do this research time in two hour blocks because I learned a while back that for me, I need that, I need that break to let my mind kind of rest a little bit. <laughs> so we'll do that. And then I do have service things that I do on Mondays, Friday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. I actually have standing meetings for the university things that I'm on as well as for um, some other things that I'm on. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's just put a standing meeting here because that meeting is one hour. And then I have another standing meeting that is actually only a half an hour, which I think these smaller ones are actually supposed to be a half an hour. And that meeting is at 11. Oops, oh, cricket. Ooh, those come up nice. Okay, I hope y'all saw how nice that came up. Okay, there we go. And then, let's see, I have, I usually keep a block on Wednesdays for any other committee meetings that might come up. And I do know that I have one that usually happens from around one until about two or 2.30. Actually, I think that one always goes till 2.30. So let's use the bigger one. I want it to be shorter, but it never is. <laughs> so let's use this one to take up two hours. Okay. That looks great. So let's go ahead and put in what we would actually do. So this is going to be... All right. So, that is so cute. Hi, what do you guys think? Isn't that great? So these are a little bit darker. As you can see, you can easily see the black writing on there, no problem. Um, but it just looks so nice. Now, because these stickers, you do only get 16 per page. You know, if you were gonna use this as like a weekly kind of thing, as an undated weekly, I'm using this as an, I sort of giving an example of how I would use it as like an ideal planner for the week. Uh, this is something where I could see you would easily go through these stickers pretty quickly. But a way that you can kind of extend this, obviously, would be to use your highlighters and kind of use the blocking method to be able to highlight and block through 
what you're actually, oops, probably shouldn't do that because that's definitely different, um, right? If you wanted to just block through what you're actually doing on a given time, right? Let's see. Do I only have pens over here? Oh, here we go. <laughs> Here's another highlighter. So for example, right? We could just block through here for a class and you could use uh, different colors to signify different things, right? So we could then signify that we're, oops, let's use the fat side of this, right? Here and here, for example. Right, uh, and then if you wanted to kind of write in some other things, so these are things where they're the actual sort of meetings or big times that are blocked off. But like if you had to prep for these meetings, for example, you might go ahead and do over here, use the highlighter to be able to highlight here, right? And then, come back in with your pen and write so that you could write in, you can use the sticker for the meeting itself and then write in whatever you had to do to prep for that meeting. So that'd be one way visually to be able to separate it a little bit, the difference between like the meeting and the preparation, for example. This would be something I would use as an idea too for uh, if I was a graduate student, I would probably use this the same way. So I would write in any, use the stickers for like the standing meetings or the main concepts. And then, uh, cause for example, here on the Friday, I wrote research writing, read and edit, right? So that's how I have that time blocked off in my calendar. Um, in my planner and then in my research notebook or even on my paper planner, I actually write in what project I'm actually working on. And so I might use this time block down here uh, to maybe even just write in like some specific details. So I might do something like read this week is not writing or writing or editing. This work is a reading week. I might write something like this. Like this is the book that I'm actually gonna be reading this week, right? Uh, so I might do something like that. Down over here, so this is the time when I, I'm the QJS book review editor. So this is the time when I actually do that. But here underneath, I have list written in here of what I'm actually gonna be doing. Uh, as a way to kind of both use the space, but also indicate what's supposed to be happening here, right? Now I could also obviously write that above as well. So for example, before this meeting, I don't usually, I don't always have something. Sometimes I do, usually I don't, right? I could something write like that. Right, and then now mentally, I know that this is attached to this. But if I if this was a new practice, for example, I might just draw an arrow down to it so that I remember that that goes with that, right? So that because this meeting is only an hour, it's usually it's a working meeting. So it's the kind of meeting where you might start like your prep in the hour, hour and a half before the meeting and then keep working through, right? So it's one of those sorts of meetings. So that might be the kind of way that I would do something like that, right? Um, or something like this for class prep, right? Something that I need to do before class prep or before class is finish any grading, right? And then uh, final notes. Right, to finish any final lecture notes. So that's something that I wanna go before class, not after class, right? Uh, so that's the kind of way that I would probably use something like this uh, to be able to show 
what all needed to be done. Now, I don't usually work on Saturdays and Sundays. So for me, if I was using this as a weekly, I would end up using leaving these blank because I don't normally, I try very hard not to do the, I try to keep these days as personal days and not as work days. <laughs> um, although sometimes, honestly, especially if I'm reading something really interesting, uh, I'll often do my reading on Saturdays and Sundays. That actually doesn't bother me. Um, and so my research reading, and even research writing, if I'm being honest, uh, on the weekends. I usually don't do a lot of it, but I do some of it. So, uh, so that's how I would use this. You do have a task uh, line here and then some lines here where you could definitely put in some little items if you needed to. Obviously, there's room for decor as well if you wanted to be able to do this. The other thing that I really like about this is it starts at 5 and ends at 11. So regardless of what kind of schedule you need, if you're somebody who doesn't start work till 5 p.m., right, and you are essentially on, a, on an overnight shift, right, you could take this through all the way through that overnight shift from 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. and then still have a little bit of room for things that are happening in the morning before you go to bed, <laughs> right? Uh, but no matter what kind of work you do, this is something that could really work out for you. If you're someone who would like to keep an ideal schedule that has something where you're lining out a little bit more what your work, university work stuff is, so your teaching, research, and service, and then gives a little bit of room to outline personal things as well, this definitely is going to give you plenty of room to be able to do that. Now this notebook does have 104 pages, which would give you enough for, Ashley said in her happy hour, that's enough for two full years of scheduling. So there is plenty of room in here. And then the thing that I really enjoy is that the back of the page is completely blank. So as for researchers, scholars, you know we love us some blank paper sometimes. So this could be something where you're then writing out like stuff in the back like any thoughts or whatever that you might have with this particular week you can write those here if you have like some research thoughts or something like that you can put those here if you're using this for your research assistants to kind of keep track of things that are happening or logging things that are happening on the back is a great place where you could actually write out a quick little log if you needed them to log something um, and so I really like that. Uh, I like that if you are using this for a research assistant for like an ideal kind of hourly layout or weekly layout for a research assistant or a few research assistants, you could easily show everybody's schedule. Then you could give one to each individual person with their personalized schedule and some ideal things that you expect them to complete during the course of the week. Uh, and so I just really think that that is kind of, that's kind of interesting. It's a, it's a good idea. <laughs> I really, really like this. I'm looking forward to using this. Like I said, the paper feels amazing. The cover feels amazing. It's just, this is great. This is definitely something though that's going to sit on the desk or sit in the office. This is not something you're going to be carrying around every day. First of all, it's a little bit heavy actually, but it's also um, because it's not, this is a, a nice cardstock, but it's not like cardboard. So it's got some heft to it, but not really weight to it. Like the pages weigh more than this cover does. So it's going to be, it's not flimsy, but it is flexible. Uh, so you want to keep that in mind if you're thinking about maybe carrying this around. I would advise against it, to be perfectly honest. Like I said, this is the kind of thing that I would definitely keep on the desk. Maybe rip out this page and put it you know, on a board, if you have like someplace public that you want people to see it. If you have, or what I could see using this for is actually if you didn't want to rip it out, especially if it's for you personally, 
I could actually see leaving this in, especially if you're using it to track research or project development, for example. Um, I could see leaving this in and uh, being able to have and know when your um, what you've actually done. So you would date it across the top, have your research things listed, and then be able to really just, as you flip through, see what happened each week, right? So that could be really useful. Like I said, doing some kind of color coding, I would use this if I wasn't using, even if I was using the stickers, I would probably write the sticker name or do something so that I would know or be able to keep track of what's, what the stickers mean, especially if I thought I might switch the colors around uh, just so that you have a record of what it was for. Okay, but that is a close up of how we would use it. So that's it. I am so excited about this. So let's do a little bit. We're going to set up a little bit just real quick. We want to go ahead and put one of our pocket folders in. So I'm actually going to put this in the work section because this is the section where I am most likely to be handed some papers during a meeting or something that I'm going to need to then keep track of. So I'm just going to stick this back there. Now this is, she's already pretty chunky, so we don't want to get too, too crazy um, with it, but I definitely wanted to get that in there. And then we are going to add the mind mapping. We're not going to add a lot. We're just going to add a couple back here in the notes section, uh, right behind these progress tracker and project note sheets that we got last month. Go ahead and just add in a few of these mind mapping pages. We're not going to take a lot, just a couple. Because again, she's already pretty chunky as it is. <laughs> And I just love having like blank pages that I can use to just develop different things. So that is perfect. And then let's go for the, I'm just looking at what I want to do with this. I love being able to use the dashboards, but honestly, I already, I love how March is looking. I'm loving how April is looking. For May, I just have the May vellum. And I don't, I think I don't want to separate these. I think I, I don't know. I really actually do want to use this. Let's see, let's go to the personal. Ooh, those are all making me very happy. The only one that I'm not like jumping up and down about actually is this one. So I'm gonna take that one out. Let me see if we just add the that one. put these right now I am storing my unused um, or the ones that I'm not using right now I'm just storing them um, on this set of discs for right now using this old happy planner classic size binder um, covers because I don't want these papers to get messed up and I don't have any more half letter size covers. 
So this is how I'm storing those for right now. And that doesn't really bother me because <laughs> I don't go in and out of that regularly. So that is that. I love that. That makes me so happy for March. So nice. Because this is what I've got going on for February. And I absolutely love that for my personal. So I don't want to change it. And then for work for February, this is what I have going on. I don't want to change that either. <laughs> so I think that we're going to leave that, leave those the way they are. So that is wonderful. I am so excited. All right. So that is it for the cloth and paper unboxing for all of the things that we got. All of the little stickers. We did two little setups. So I showed you how I plan to use everything. Um, put in a folder already. I'm so excited to be adding some of those to uh, some of the other uh, things that I'll be using. That is so much fun. So uh, thanks so much. This actually ended up being a little bit of a longie, uh, but thanks so much for joining me and I'll see y'all on the next one. Have a great day, everybody. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.